You know, it's amazing that we've actually expanded to a bigger space in Ekenov, where we partnered with the TLC Children's Home, and we have managed to form a, a, an agreement with them to use their farming space, which is about nine hectares. Welcome to the Farming Podcast. My name is Mbari Nwoko, your host. Um, once again, right here on the Private Property um, channel. Uh, today we're joined by a friend of the podcast who has been on the show before, and we spoke about hydroponic farming, uh, rooftop farming, because she had her own rooftop, rooftop farm in Johannesburg CBD. But she joins us today on a different level where she's going to tell us about her agribusiness online platform that she has started with a woman's organization and that promotes um, and um, showcases uh, agribusinesses regarding hydroponic farming and organic farming. So if you are interested in hydroponic farming, how to diverse into organic farming, I believe this conversation would be quite beneficial to you because she is a farmer herself and so she knows a thing or two about hydroponic farming. And so, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment, like and share, subscribe to the podcast and um, reach out to our guests over and above our conversation today because this podcast is for you and we're here to help you learn everything about agribusiness. So um, getting into the conversation right now, I'm joined by U Sbongile Kele. Sbongile, how are you doing? And thank you so much for coming onto the podcast once again. I'm blessed. Thank you, my sister Mbali. And it's actually a pleasure and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to share with fellow farmers, yeah. the developments that have taken place and in building these communities that we are surrounded with because we always say we want to be the ones that see the change in our communities and we go all out to actually make sure that we impact communities. Absolutely. So let's just start off by um, giving us a, a rundown of where you are right now with your farming business. I remember the last time we spoke, you're farming in the rooftop. Is everything going well? And we also touched based on um, how COVID had impacted you um, in our previous conversation. So how's the farm looking? Um, are you harvesting any crops at the moment? You know, it's amazing that we've actually expanded to a bigger space in Ekenov, where we partnered with the TLC Children's Home, and we have managed to form a, a, an agreement with them to use their farming space, which is about nine hectares. So we set up an hydroponics, which takes now 14,000 uh, uh, crops. And we are also doing an incubation there. We set up a class mm. and we're working as a group of five of us now in a collaboration called African Women in Agriculture. Okay. So I've got four dynamic women that I'm working with. is Janice Schechter, Agnes Howe, and I've got uh, Veronica uh, Aswani. Mm. And we're also working with Bianca Clark. So as the five of us, we've started that incubation now and also the farming business and the platform called I Am Citizen. So it's been a, a great move because now it has given us an opportunity to now impact communities surrounding the Ekenov area where we recruit young women who want to do hydroponics farming mm. and do also organic farming. And we also give them business skills. Mm. And they're also taken to a point where they're able to start their own businesses using uh, uh, farming as a way of, of entering markets because the challenge has been that they say as young people farming hasn't been easy so we said no you can join and see that there's there's actually so much that you can do within the value chain of farming so we 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 started with the first incubation last year and then this year we've got the second cohort which we're doing up until July then July we're taking the next intake where we're encouraging them to go also and impact their communities where they come from and, and we evaluate their community projects. We profile them on I Am Citizen, which is the online platform, digital platform that we have started as AWIA. Yeah. So tell me more about the incubation that you formed with AWIA. Um, how long does it take um, and why did you decide that there's a need for an incubation? 
with, with the current situation where most of the challenges that were faced by women was access to land and access to finance and also looking at how do we make sure that we, we empower them on starting, just starting, because the key thing is that people want mm. to be into farming, but they're not starting. So with that nine hectares that we 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 leasing from the children's home, we're able to get them to start and practice and also learn from a, a space where we are set up. And then we also uh, le- assist them and in, in capacitate them to a point of them starting up their own businesses where they come from. So the incubation is actually on capacitating women to, to be able to start and farm. And they have access to having like trainings that mm. they don't have to do it just online, but they can come and do practicals at the farm where we are at the TLC Children's Home. Yeah. And how long do you train the woman uh, around farming? Um, is it just a, a few months, a few weeks? And then what happens thereafter? It's actually six months because the first cohort, we got them for the whole year last year. So this year we split it into six months. So we, we, we've got the first co- second cohort, start, which started in Feb. Mm. They're finishing in July. And then we'll take the next cohort up until November. So what, what happens there, we train them on the practical side of farming. And also we, we have classes where we have personal development. We're also looking at... At, at training them on finances, how to manage their finances, how to have access mm. to markets. And then we invite guest speakers on various topics in agriculture to mm. come and address them. Mm. So that they understand that there's more to farming than just farming the land. We say you can actually be in, 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 in any value chain within the farming uh, sector. So we encourage them to also look at how they can come in. We've got new intakes that some of them are looking at being retailers and starting their own businesses where they will actually uh, uh, be uh, acting as aggregators to, to, to aggregate from farmers and then supply the communities where they come from. Yeah. So am I correct in saying that the incubation right now is purely focused on crop farming and not necessarily livestock? We, we've, we've included poultry this year because we've had three intakes of young ladies that want to do poultry. Mm. So we've, we, we've included poultry and we're looking at expanding also to piggery and also looking at, at uh, uh, sheep farming and goat farming mm. and rabbit farming because we, we, we interview them and then they tell us what, what space they want to be in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we also... Uh, guest speakers on the various topics, like with poultry, we had a, a young farmer that has just opened an abattoir in Ekenov mm. to come and speak to them and encourage them that there's more you can do within the value chain of poultry. Mm, mm. So Thomas Bongene, to be part of the incubation, do I need to be a farmer that has access to land, for example, but maybe need uh, a bit of technical information or um, technical skill in how to cultivate crops, etc.? And that is when I would apply into the incubation, stay there for six months and then go back onto my land and farm? Or can it be any Anybody who's just interested in farming, exploring the different uh, commodities that are available in farming, whether it's crops, uh, poultry, um, um, even uh, adding a value add in terms of an abattoir. So can it just be anybody or do I have to have land or an, or an already existing business where I can up, upskill um, and improve my knowledge in farming? We, we're actually encouraging even those who don't have land. Why? Okay. Because we're saying there's lots of people who say they don't have land, but they're not maximizing the spaces that they have where they are. Mm. Because there's a new project also that will be starting very soon in May, mm. where we're using pyramids to show them how to grow in their own backyards. Because with the current situation of food shortage, we cannot leave those backyards to life follow. So there's a friend of mine, Veronica, who's also part of the of the women in agriculture. She's designed a a pyramid that you can use as a vertical farm to to plant in in a small area, about 120 plants at a go. So we're pushing that to train people on that. And then we assist you to get to it. We give them a fundable business plan that they can now go back and use the land where they come from. 
Okay, so now moving on to the online uh, agricultural platform, you mentioned that you're promoting businesses that are doing hydroponic farming and organic farming. So just tell us a little bit more about the platform and how it works. So this platform will work as a community as well because we've got a page where we invite communities to come and learn and say, like, for example, ask an agronomist, and then there will be an agronomist that will answer questions for people who want to be in farming, but they've got lots of questions that they're not certain about. Mm. And then we've got a, a, a side where we do profiling of farms and also profiling of, of, of stakeholders. Like if there's uh, your, your, your people that supply uh, inputs, they, they will be profiled on, on, on that I am citizen so that people have access to the full uh, network of not just farmers, network of, of also suppliers and also stakeholders within the agricultural space. Mm. When did you decide to, uh, when did you develop and launch the I Am Citizen platform and what success stories can you tell us thus far that have come out of the platform? Well, with the I Am Citizen, we started in, in, in 2021 and the success stories has been that we've been able to build a network of farmers. They, even the incubators that we had for a year last year, they're also profiled on that one. They're able to do their business on that platform mm. and network amongst themselves. Because we, we encourage them to say, you, you need to collaborate and work together mm. because with farming, you cannot operate in isolation. Mm. So we're encouraging them to say, please work together. And with the second incubation that we have, the second cohort, we've also onboarded them to say, do your business on the platform because digital space, you're not limited to where you are. You can actually network with women from different regions, different places, because we're going global and we cannot be operating just locally. Mm. Mm. Uh, and confirming uh, that you did say that the land that uh, uh, the incubation and the platform is, 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 is highlighting is for the farmers who are being incubated in Akinoff. Have you received any requests for people um, who've seen successes in your incubation program to maybe replicate what you're doing in other areas, particularly in Gauteng, over and above the other provinces? Yes, we've, we've had so many requests because yeah. even now we, we're busy communicating with people in, in the area of Ikuruleni. they actually saying, can we replicate this in, in, in the East as well? Because we yeah. want to take it within communities, within Gauteng. Then also we've mm. had in, uh, inquiries from the Eastern Cape mm. to actually replicate this IP in the different areas. Right. And just summing up... And also with engagements with, with, with them. So we're open to, to replicating this model in different areas. Yeah, I, I think a critical question also to find out, Spongil, is that how many intakes can you take at a time? Okay, at the moment, because we're in partnership with IDC, okay. and we, we were looking at 12 okay. per, per cohort, yeah. which is six months. We're looking at 24 in, 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 in one year. But now with the other portion that we've included, we're looking at using the the new Isivuno, which we've named as Isivuno, where we'll also look at impacting communities at larger scale where we'll have Saturday mm. classes for them to learn about this Isivuno, the new one that we're doing where we are training them on how to maximize their spaces in the urban areas, especially mm. the, the ones that have back gardens. And I mean, on my back garden, which is 20 by 20, I've managed to grow plants as well. So I always say to them, there's no way you can leave that land fallow and, mm. and then you say you don't have food. Because we still have that project called Farm in a Box where we, we, we donate seeds to, 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 to communities to start their own food gardens at their back. Yes. Right. You did say that the, the, the incubation is a non-profit. So what happens to all the crops that you, uh, that you produce, part of the incubation program? Do you sell that um, with the revenue? Do you plow it back onto the farm? Or do you give the crops to nearby communities as part of food security? Yes, on the, on the 
One for farming enterprise, because within the, the AWIA, we've got the farming enterprise, which is the one where we're planting the crops and we've partnered with Ebb and Fresh. They are our off-takers. Okay. They come and collect and sell, and then the profit is it's, it's plowed back into the AWIA NPO. So the, the other one, it's impacting like the very same children's home. Mm. They, they actually get produce from us because when we started, we started with them and we started as a food garden that we were doing for them. Mm. And then they saw the, the way it was done and they said, we've got land that's available. Can you partner with us and set up something in, 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 in the TLC children's home? Great. So part of the impact that we make, it's actually 10% goes to impact of communities locally and then yeah. the rest we, we plow back into the NPO from the sales made with the partnership we have with Ebb and Fresh yeah. who are aggregators. Yeah, it sounds like you guys have really thought about it quite uh, uh, extensively, you know, uh, making sure that you're covering all the blocks that really farmers face as a big challenge or a barrier to entry into uh, the agricultural sector. Um, I know you are a farmer as well and now you've transitioned into a, 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 a space where you're helping other farmers, teaching them, um, exposing their businesses and obviously um, transferring skills to aspirant farmers. What have you learned um, throughout uh, 2021 and going into 2022 um, over an, um, since you've started helping um, all the cohorts in the various stages of their businesses? Um, what have you learned from, from, from starting um, your incubation program as well as I Am A Citizen uh, program? What have you learned around the farmers and more so just uh, um, in general within agriculture from a farmer's perspective. And wearing my hat as a farmer, this has been a, a, an amazing time because yeah. now as a farmer, we, we always wanted to start in isolation and run your farm there on your own. Mm. But now with, with moving to African Women in Agriculture, where I collaborated with five dynamic women, mm. it, it has actually opened my eyes to the point that collaboration is key. If we want to build communities, we need to collaborate. And the networking that takes place as farmers has actually mm. grown to a point that I'm even networking with women as far as the Northwest, because we, we didn't leave it to saying we are in Gauteng, we need to address issues in Gauteng. Mm. It has actually opened up for us to actually network with, with people as far as India, because I've just won the Global Award for Women in, 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 in Agriculture, addressing the SDG goal number two of zero hunger. Yeah. And I'm, I'm finding myself speaking to women in India who are inspired by what we're doing in Gauteng. And this has opened up a door because, like I say, with, with, with networking, we're not limiting it to the WhatsApp. We're now saying let's work with apps where we can empower each other and reach other continents and countries surrounding us as, as South Africa. Well, that's fantastic, and congratulations on your award. I think uh, it definitely shows um, of the efforts and the work that you're doing on the ground. But before I let you go, Swangile, what three points can you give to aspirant farmers who want to venture into farming, um, whether it could be crops, uh, livestock, poultry? What advice would you give? Maybe top three things that you'd give to an aspirant farmer who wants to venture into agriculture. Thank you, my sister. You know, I always say to, to farmers that as a farmer, you must have the tenacity mm. to continue despite all challenges that we're currently facing. And, and the second one is to actually be there as someone who's a solution. See yourself as a solution. What are you bringing into the agri-space? Be a solution in a community. And also the third one will be Start wherever you are. Mm. What is it that's in your hand? Mm. Do not limit yourself to say, I'm waiting until I have 10 million or I have a funding from start as little as at your back garden. Move on. Let your communities know that you are farming in your area. If you say you are a farmer and no one knows where you come from that you are farming, it's a challenge. So start where you are and use as little resources that as you move on and you're speaking to other funders, they always want to know, have you started something? Where are you uh, Where are you currently? Where are you moving to? What are your future? And don't be scared to dream big. Mm. 
I always encourage people to say, dream big, don't limit yourself. I left my profession as an accountant to do my passion of farming mm. and I've never stopped. Mm. I've never stopped. I started even with a small garden at my backyard to actually let me eat from the garden just outside my house and then move on. So I really encourage people to say, start where you are and don't despise humble beginnings because we always want to see things happening at a higher level without starting where you, you, you have your footprint. Wow. So that's my, my statement. Wow. To say start where you are and don't limit yourself and, definitely, and dream big. And definitely have the tenacity to farm. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining yes. us, uh, Mongile. <laughs> um, we thoroughly enjoy your that's inputs that. and your presence within the Farming Podcast. And uh, thank you for the work that you're doing in agriculture because a lot more people need training, a lot more people need exposure into the realities that a farmer faces every single day. And thank you for just, you know, um, pushing those individuals and holding their hand, training them, transferring skills, making them understand how the whole value chain of agriculture works. And congratulations one, once again for winning your award. Thank you so much, my sister, and stay blessed. We're really touched. And thank you that you, you, you're taking this stories to, because these stories need to be heard by the next generation. I'm always looking at the seventh yeah. generation because I'm already with <laughs> grandchildren. So I want them to know that we didn't sit, I'll tell them, we were busy in Abombali with this farming. It never stopped. You need to. You you just need to take the baton forward. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really encouraged and thank you and God bless you for for all the work that you're doing. Thank you. I really really appreciate it. That was Mungi Lekela, who's one of the founding members of African Women in Agriculture. The uh, organization is called AWIA. A W I. They're based in Ekonov where they are incubating farmers uh, for a period of six months, teaching them how to produce crops, how to understand the value chain. Um, and they're working with an aggregator who's able to take those crops and um, just show the farmers basically the basics around farming, what goes into farming and how the value chain works from a spec requirement to an input perspective and when you have to cultivate your own land. So um, they teach you how to uh, formulate a business plan, um, how to just get started and get going and working with other farmers and just understanding um, the realities that a farmer faces each and every day. They're not only focused in crop production, but um, have moved into poultry and um, have aspirations into moving into rabbit farming, livestock farming as a whole. So um, I think if you are looking to start a farm or just maybe grow um, the area in which you're producing food in, I think uh, the OEA team is, is a team that you should get in touch with. So reach out just to Usbongi Lekele and her team based in Ekenov. And I believe once um, they have uh, their cohort applications open, you should definitely apply. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment um, on our YouTube channel. We'll make sure that we could reach out to, um, to Sbongil on your behalf and maybe share her contact details as well. But yeah, that's it from the Farming Podcast. Today's topic was agribusiness online platforms, how we start agribusiness online platforms, incubating farmers, teaching farmers, transferring skills. And um, yeah, I hope this conversation was beneficial to you and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, my dear. Have a blessed day.